The anterior cruciate ligament, a piece of tough band in the knee, is so crucial for jumping, running, and turning, its injury used to end an athlete's professional career. For a condition as severe as it is, torn ACL is surprisingly not uncommon. It happens around 250,000 times a year in the US alone. Most of them are due to sports injuries, but they can also be caused by accidents or falls. Fortunately, current medical advancements have given a way for people with ACL injuries to resume his or her active life or fledgling sports career by undergoing the ACL reconstruction surgery. Torn ACL will not heal, even if stitched, as it's covered in synovial fluid which prevents it from getting access to blood and oxygen to heal itself. So, a comparable living tissue is used as a graft to replace the torn ACL. The graft is generally harvested from the patient's own tissue, called an autograft, such as from the patella tendon, the hamstring tendon, and the quadriceps tendon. However, if the stability of the tissue around the knee cannot be compromised, Taking an allograft from a defrosted cadaver or using a synthetic graft may otherwise be necessary. Before the surgery, make sure the pain and swelling in the knee have lessened and the patient is able to do a normal range of motion. This is prior to the three weeks of low-intensity physical therapy required to strengthen the muscle. The doctor should ask for the patient's ongoing medications or supplements, as some medications, such as blood thinners, may increase the risk of bleeding. No food and water were allowed two hours before surgery. During the surgery, general anesthesia may be used, especially on the knee to decrease postoperative pain. The surgeon then begins to examine the knee to verify the torn ACL and check the condition of other ligaments and components as soon as the patient relaxes. After preparing the suitable graft, the surgeon starts a minimally invasive procedure called arthroscopy. Small incisions called portals, around 1 cm wide, are made in the front of the knee. One is for the arthroscope, a tube with a camera, and a light source to visually guide the surgeon. The others are for the surgical instruments to access the joint space. The torn ACL stump is removed using a shaver, which is also used to clean up the area or adjacent parts such as the meniscus. Using a special drill, bone tunnels are made to the thigh bone and shin bone in order to place and hold both ends of the graft. The sutures for the graft are tied to a long pin to be passed through the shin bone to the thigh bone tunnel. After attaching the graft, the surgeon pulls the suture and places the graft into position right where the old ACL was. Then, interference screws, spiked washers, or staples are used to secure the ends of the graft and fix it in place. The tibial end of the graft is first put under tension and secured afterwards. As the screws and sutures are biocompatible, they're handily absorbed by the bone, eliminating the need for removal surgery unless there's a problem. Finishing the surgery, the surgeon will probe the graft to make sure it has good tension and test the stability using Lachman's test. The skin is then closed and dressing can be applied. As we wait for the patient to recover after the surgery, we'll discuss the treatment and prevention in the next video. Thank you for your continuous support, especially our valued patrons and members who have been encouraging us to keep producing more quality content.